Welcome to the tutorial Drawing with Shapes. In this tutorial I'm going to continue to clean up the front sketch of the cartoon rabbit but this time using the shape tools. So if you go to the tools toolbar and hold down the line tool icon the other tools in its family are revealed in the menu beside. So the three tools that are considered shape tools are the line, rectangle, and ellipse tool. If you then go to the tool properties panel you'll see that you're able to access the other two shape tools, the rectangle and the ellipse, directly from this tool properties panel without having to go back to the tools toolbar. If you start to draw a line, you'll see that you're able to drag the second point of the line anywhere within a 360 degree radius. If you then hold down the shift key while dragging around your cursor, you'll see that you can draw a perfectly straight line or have the line snap to 15 degree increments. If you then draw a second line and hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows um, and bring it close to the second line, you'll see that it snaps to the end of any other open central vector line in the area. So if we select them both, we can see that the ends are touching. The same thing goes for the Rectangle tool. Um, you can draw any freeform rectangle that you'd like or if you hold down the shift key, your rectangle is drawn in proportion, which basically means that you're creating a square. You can do the same thing for the ellipse tool by holding on the shift key, you can create a circle, or you can check this option, draw a circle. This will force any ellipse that you try to draw to be drawn in proportion. This option also exists for the rectangle tool, which basically means that you want a square, um, but does not exist for the line tool. To add to this, you can hold down the Alt or Option key and draw your perfectly proportioned ellipse from the center. And you can use a combination of these things. So if you uncheck the Draw Circle option, but hold down Alt or Option while drawing your ellipse, you can draw it from the center, but you don't necessarily have to draw a circle. You can draw any type of a freeform ellipse. Or if you hold down Shift option on Mac, Alt in Windows, you can draw a perfectly proportioned ellipse from the center. So any of these those three uh, options or keyboard shortcut combinations will work. If you then decide that you think your line is a bit too thick and you'd like to maybe change its width, you can select from one of the preset pencil styles that each have different widths. Um, or you can go directly into the um, line width field and type in the width that you desire and then continue to draw. Now let's take a look at some of the options here um, in the center of the tool properties. So let's start with the famous draw behind option. If we draw a bunch of ellipses or circles in the drawing view You'll notice that the newest drawing is always drawn or laid down upon the previous drawings. If we then enable the draw behind option and do the same thing, you'll see that the newest drawing is always placed behind the previous drawings. Like so. The next options are the snap options. Let's choose the first one, snap to contour. I'm going to change my tool for the select tool. So if I select this oval here and grab it at the bottom, you'll see that as I drag it towards the outer eye contour, a blue circle appears. And what that's telling you is where the software is trying to snap your objects together. So since you grabbed the smaller oval at that point, that's where the software will snap it towards a contour in its area, like that. If we then select the next option, Snap and Align, and do the same thing to the second eye, you'll see that as I move the eye around, the point where I grabbed the smaller oval with my cursor um, is being aligned to different sh contour shapes in the area, and blue guides appear letting you know um, when you've aligned that point to different uh, contours. So I'm going to snap it here and let it go. 
The last one is a snap to grid. So um, of course we need the grid for that, which I'll uh, enable. And as I drag this square around, you'll see that the point that I grabbed is being snapped along the increments of the 12 by 12 field. So I'll put that back. The next option I'd like to talk about is the uh, autofill option. So we're going to click that here and then go up to the color panel. I know we haven't talked too much about the color panel, but what we're going to do is unlink the brush, pencil, and fill. Actually, let's relink them and make them all black first and then unlink them. And then select just the fill and select a different color in the color panel. So we're going to make it red. Then whenever I draw, um, circles in the drawing view, they'll automatically get filled with the line color and the fill color um, without me having to go in with the, the paint bucket or fill tool to color this. So they'll automatically get colored every time I draw a shape. So let's relink that. I'm not going to talk about the automatically create color art option. But the last option I will talk about is the auto flatten. So I'm going to click this, and as you guys may have guessed already, as um, I draw a shape and I draw another shape on top of it, these two shapes have now been flattened together. So if I select just one, they both get selected. If I click and drag on one, they both get moved around together. So despite the fact that it looks like they both are still individual objects with their own um, center vector line, they actually are able to be manipulated. Uh, together because they are in fact flattened and now exist as one shape. So that's it for drawing with shapes. Um, stay tuned for the next tutorial using the polyline tool.